SI Wave is a power integrity and signal integrity tool. An induced voltage solver is one of the tools in SI Wave and will be discussed in this video. An induced voltage solver measures if the PCB is shielded against any noise signal from external sources. It calculates the noise voltage on any port you place in the model. But if the PCB accepts noise, then it can also radiate. That's why you need to study it and examine your PCB. And if there's an issue, you need to resolve it. SI Wave should not be used to build PCBs. Why this is possible, it's not the best way to utilize SI Wave, but rather try to import files from professional CAD files. SI Wave can import the following type of CAD files IPC, ODB, EDB, DXF, and GDS. Any process in SI Wave starts by selecting the solver. Once you select the solver, a dialog box pops up. All the user needs to do is to fill up the form and submit it. For example, here, if I select the compute induced voltage solver, I get this dialog box. However, some solvers require ports before you can select the solver. The induced voltage solver expects ports in the model, otherwise it will not be activated. You won't be able to launch it. This icon will be totally deactivated, exactly like this icon. Create a port. There are many ways in SI Wave. For example, when you upload the CAD file, SI Wave will show you a list of all the nets and ask the user to assign ports to the nets. So this is one way. The other way to assign ports to power planes is to use the PI solver. So if you click configure PI analysis, you get the list of all the power planes. If you select any one of them, you can go and assign ports. To add ports to the nets, the best way to do that is to go to tools, generate port on selected nets. Then you get the list of all the nets that you have in your system. And all what you need to do is to select them one by one. For example, if I go and I select N17055, I have these two. I can go ahead and say generate ports, or I can select more. For example, we select the other one, PW. Also has two. Notice that every time I select a new one, SI Wave only displayed the ports related to the last one that I selected. That it doesn't mean that it deselect the other one, the first one. No, both of them are selected. So if I click generate, it will generate ports for both of them. So if I go to components and I select ports, you see here I will have the 17055, the two ports, and also the P PB underscore WR, the two of the other trace, in addition to the two ports that I put on the power plane. Going back to the induced voltage solver, so we click here, activate it. You can see here, you can specify the name of your solution. You specify the band. You can have multiple bands. It doesn't have to be only a single band. Then you specify the incident wave. You can use spherical, you can use Cartesian. Let's talk about the Cartesian because it's easy to explain. If we select the direction of the wave to be negative X, it means that the wave is coming from the positive X going towards the minus X. And in order to see that, you just click on center vector visualization, and this will show you immediately the direction of your wave in red. The other line is the polarization. So now, now we know the direction of the wave. Now we need to know the polarization. Usually the polarization should be perpendicular to the direction of the wave. And you can go in 3D, click Alter, and left mouse, and you can rotate, and you can see the polarization with respect to the PCB in 3D. You can change this to one, can change this to one you see you can have all possible directions or we can have a combination of all of them
Same thing if you select spherical. You have to specify the phi and the theta. So if you specify theta to be 90, it means you are saying that the, the direction of the wave is in the xy plane. So it can be 180, it can be 0 in this direction, it can be 45. It's all in the xy plane because theta is 90. And the same thing for polarization. It has to be perpendicular to the direction of the wave. You can also have multiple of them. So in this case, you can have a list of, of phi and theta values, different values, uh, like a matrix, and you specify the polarization. So the, as you notice here, the polarization has only one value. So try to think about it as if the wave is coming from one direction, like from positive x to minus x, and this is its polarization. And these numbers just represent the rotation of the PCB with respect to that wave. You can save the voltage at port locations for all angles. So usually if you don't click this, it will give you the summation of the effect of all the waves at any port. But if you select this, then it can display the contribution of each wave on each port. The last thing you need to specify is the magnitude of your wave. So this is in volt per meter. And you can also specify the accuracy of your solver by clicking on other solver options. You can select balanced, optimum accuracy, or optimum speed. If I usually I start with the balanced one. If if it goes very fast, then I go and I select the optimum accuracy because definitely we want accurate results. But if it takes so long to solve the problem, maybe you should select an optimum speed. And that's it, as simple as this. Now you are ready to launch and uh, look at the solution. So we start with induced voltage with no caps. Change that to with caps because we have the decoupling caps on the power planes. And that's it. So now we are ready to solve. Let's go back to single case, Cartesian, minus one. zero and z the polarization minus one and we changed so this is induced voltage that's the name with caps because we are using decoupling caps with our power planes and now we are ready to launch so when you launch this you get a solution and the solution will be something like this so let's click here right click plot induced voltage at ports. Scaps. You can select all the ports or you can select some of them. Uh, for our first trial, we'll select all of them just to see what kind of response we're gonna get. You can plot the magnitude, you can also plot the phase. So we look at the magnitude first. So this is what you're gonna get, is a graph, one graph, showing you what each port is gonna see. So this is the voltage seen on each port at any frequency. And this is all numbers in, in volt. So you have for each line, for each trace, you have two curves, which are the two ports. And this green and red are for the power plane. It's almost close. You can add markers here. Let's move, let's move this down a little bit. You can add markers to a graph just to see what are the exact value at any point. You can also, you can also add more features or calculations, additional post-processing, like you want to display the maximum of each curve. So if, if you click that option immediately, SI Wave will add a column here showing you the maximum of each curve. Double click here, change the properties, go to general, and you can change the precision, let's say 10, field width and the precision to 10. Now you can see more accurate numbers, you need to do that because we're talking about very, very small numbers. So that's the maximum. And you can also display others, 
other uh, functions, average and minimum. You can also add notes. So you can, I can add notes saying something like uh, this is uh, the voltage, the induced voltage. This is the induced voltage with gaps. You can any note you want. You can add as many notes as you want. Now you can also add limit lines. So you specify points and you say, I want uh, to add lines. You can export them, save them. You can import them. For example, I save the one here and I say, okay. And here we go. We have a limit line added. So now this graph can be used in any presentation. Notice also that the moment you add a limit line, immediately SI Wave will add a column showing you which of these curves is violating the limit line. So these are the things that you can do with, with this plot. Now, in addition to the magnitude, you can also plot the phase. So let's go back to SI Wave. I can say plot the phase and I will say the phase. plot we go back here again and as, as you can see it give us all the different curves for the different ports now we would like to go back to SI wave and focus only on the power planes so this is induced voltage let's say power planes With caps, generate plot. Again, we go here, we see the plot very clean. Now we would like to compare it with the case when the decoupling cap are totally deactivated. So we go back to SI wave, we go back home, we click on circuit element parameters. We select all the decaps and you click deactivate. And it's you have, this is the only way to deactivate them. You cannot deactivate them by just clicking on them. And this is just extra safety measure that we have in SI Wave to avoid people deactivating caps without knowing. So in order to deactivate, you have to press this button. And in order to activate them again, you have to press this button. So I'm going to deactivate them and you can see it says no. Okay, now we can go back and solve the same PCB, but without the caps. So if you do that, we get this case, plot induced voltage at ports, and we select this time only the power planes, and we say power planes without caps generate plot here we go let's close all the other ones we would like just to keep the one with and the one without on the tile horizontal let's add a limit line import same thing for this one And let's change the scale to be exactly the same for both of them. Now you see the difference between the two. So this is what we had without decoupling caps. And this is what we have now with the decoupling caps. So the purpose of the decoupling caps, not only to suppress the impedance of the power planes over a band of interest, it also suppresses its capability to receive noise from outside. And because it suppresses that, it also suppresses 
the capability of the power planes to radiate. Now we need to repeat it for all the possible directions and possible polarizations. So we're talking about six different directions, plus x minus x plus y minus y plus z minus z, multiplied by two polarization, two possible polarization. So six times two, times two, which is with and without caps. We're talking about 24 possibilities. And you need to study them all because you want to make sure that no matter what direction is the wave and the polarization, your PCB will not detect anything. Or whatever is being detected is solo below noise level at any port for any trace or any even uh, power play. Now back to SI wave. In addition to the results, you can also look at the profile. So the profile will tell you how much time was spent to solve the problem and the mesh and all these details. Now, this is important when you are comparing solutions of the same model at different times or you're comparing different models. You want to make sure that whatever numbers you see here matches a little bit the one you saw in other models that you are happy with the results. So it's, it's good information to, to read and uh, document. You can also look at the profile, uh, so, uh, simulation properties. Simulation properties simply in the future when you uh, are looking back to these results and you'd like to remember what exactly was the setup used to get these results, this is what you're gonna get. You cannot change anything, but it will tell you, it will remind you with all the setup that you did in order to create this solution. So these are the things that you're gonna get out of using the induced voltage solver. You will be able to study if your PCB has the capability to suppress radiation and has the capability to reject noise coming from outside from any direction. Thank you for watching the video.